Hello, my name is Mike Fiedler and I'm going to work with you on today's topic, which is preparing a CAD model for FEA. So let's go ahead and take a look at our inventor model. So we have this assembly and for our hypothetical situation, maybe what we have are some failures in this geometry here and we need to do some finite element analysis to maybe see what is going on with that part Maybe it was considered safe and an analysis wasn't initially done and we're coming back to, to interrogate. So one of the things that we talked about in this section was even though you might have a very large assembly, in order to simplify, we can try and focus on the parts of concern. So what I did was I went ahead and I selected this region of the model and right clicked and said to open. And that opens up this small sub-assembly here. And we can see now we're down to two parts. And, and my initial thought was maybe what I'll do is fix the end of this part and we'll apply our load on the other part and, and see what our stresses are in resulting displacements. But then thinking about that, recall within this section, we said that sometimes we can replace parts with boundary conditions, right? So if this rod is screwed into this other body, is there much difference whether I include this part, fix this end of it and apply the load here, or if I say I want to exclude this geometry if I just go ahead and apply the constraints in the threaded region. So again, sometimes these situations are going to be partially preference and in your own experience. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that uh, maybe this is, again, a high-strength steel part, and, and so we're not really concerned about this. Maybe we know all the failures are occurring in this one particular part. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate the geometry a little bit more. And now we're down to the single component of focus. So what we've done so far is taken the model down from a very large assembly down to a single part, uh, where we say that we're going to just look at you know, the specific part of interest and use boundary conditions where appropriate for constraining our model. As I start to look at this, then I say, is there any way that I can simplify this single body in order to perform my analysis? Maybe just to make it an even faster analysis than what it might be as it is currently. And as we look at it, we can see that there are some threads on the geometry. So there's a number of threads in all the holes. If we rotate the model around, there's a small hole that goes through right there. And then, of course, that we see there are some, some fillets and, and chamfer on the geometry. So I went ahead and simplified the geometry a little bit further. Uh, before I show you what that model looks like, let me change the orientation here and tell you what I had planned for the constraints and loads. So the constraints are going to go inside the threaded hole here. And then our force is going to be on this inside surface here and in the X direction. So given that that load is going to be right along the X axis, what we anticipate to see, given that our geometry is symmetric, given that the material is symmetric, of course, because it's just a single material throughout the body, we expect our results to be symmetric, right? Whatever happens in the upper half of this model should be a mirror image of what happens in the lower half of the model. Likewise, if I rotate the geometry around here, again, given the loading and given the symmetry of the geometry, what happens in the top half of the model should be a mirror image of what happens in the lower portion of this model. So when we flip over to the final state of the model that I'm going to analyze, there you can see I've ultimately quartered the model. So that should give me substantially less elements than what I had in the full model, right? Just thinking about that, let's say that I was going to use a specific mesh size in the full model, and that would end up with 100,000 elements. If I stick to that same mesh size and use a quarter model, then of course I then have approximately 25,000 elements in this model. So there's quite a bit of savings that can be uh, leveraged by using symmetry in a model. And you can see, besides quartering the model, I've gotten rid of the threads and the holes there. And um, I've also added a split line here. So 
I created a sketch on this surface, added a line, split these two surfaces. This was another thing that we talked about in this section about preparing your CAD models for finite element analysis. In my hypothetical situation here, we're going to fix the threaded region and then I figure there's a pin that sits in this hole and that's what's giving us our load. Of course, we're not going to model that pin, we're just going to apply a force, but I'm imagining that there is some slop or a little bit of play, a little bit of tolerance in there, so it's not a, a press fit. So whenever we load up that pin, I'm envisioning that it's loading up just the, the one half of the surface here. So that was another thing that we talked about within the section again, that we could use split lines in order to split the surfaces so that we can apply loads or constraints exactly where we need them. Okay, I think we are about ready to go ahead and begin with setting up this geometry. So let's go ahead and go over to the environments. We're going to use Autodesk Inventor Nastran for this simulation. And I'm going to go ahead and generate the mesh. All right, so there's the mesh on the geometry. You might be asking yourself why I didn't get rid of these small holes. I didn't get rid of these small holes because if we look at it now, uh, especially having meshed the model, you can see that the material, it's rather thin between that hole and the inner hole or the larger diameter hole. It's, it's about the width of an element, so I figured that might come into play if we had just gone in and, and we had blown away all the small features of the geometry. My ultimate model or the final model that I'm left with to analyze might not be representative of what we ultimately find uh, in our analysis and then it would be difficult to, to correlate what's happening in the FEA analysis with what's going on in the real world. And especially in this situation where we're saying perhaps um, we're seeing failures. I would imagine maybe one of those failures occurred at, in this region or at the hole here. And then also you'll notice that I didn't get rid of the small hole that went through because we can see that the geometry, of course, uh, kind of next down in that region. And we don't know if uh, that might be a region of, of high stress for us or not. So again, this comes down to assumptions that you need to make. And in my case, I decided to leave these at least for my first pass so that we can perform the analysis and perhaps see where the high stresses occur. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on with our setup. The first thing I'm going to do is add my constraint here where the threaded region is. And that's going to be my fixed constraint. So I'll go ahead and select that surface and say OK. And then again, we've, we've cut through our model, right? We've created a symmetry model. So what I have to do is on the surfaces where we've cut through or sliced through, we need to apply our symmetry constraints. And when you apply the symmetry constraints for a symmetry, it is whatever vector is perpendicular. So we can see the y-axis is perpendicular. So this surface and this surface, we'd want to constrain ty plus the two in-plane rotations, which in this case would be rx and rz. So I'm going to go ahead and go to constraints. And I'll select those two surfaces, that one there, and that one. And I could just uncheck boxes and leave checked what I need to have checked. But if we look a little further down, you can see there's handy dandy features right here where we can just choose the appropriate symmetry. So Y is the vector perpendicular. So I'm just going to choose Y symmetry. And you can see the program automatically sets the constraints for me, the out-of-plane translation to in-plane rotations. I'm going to go ahead and give that a name just so as it adds itself to the symmetry, or excuse me, to the model tree, we know what that particular constraint is. So I'll say OK. And I can see there's my Y symmetry constraint. Just in case I need to come back and edit it at some point, I can quickly grab the symmetry. And of course, I cut off the lower portion of the model or the bottom of the model. So I need to constrain these two surfaces with symmetry as well. If I rotate the model around, I can see that's the Z direction that's perpendicular to that slice plane. So again, I'll go into constraints, select my surfaces, and I'm just going to select the Z symmetry. And it constrains TZ plus RX and RY. Okay, 
Now lastly, what we need to do is apply our load. And again, that's why I split the surfaces here so that I could get the appropriate surface. If I hadn't split it, when I select this surface, imagine that it was a full 180 degrees. When I apply my force in the X direction, not only is it pushing on this portion of the model, but it would also be pulling on that region of the model. And it's just a little less uh, perhaps representative of what the the pin might do uh, inside this hole. So by splitting that surface, I can just model that just a little bit more accurately. So that's why we did the, the split on the surface. Let's go ahead and say that we're going to add our load. And for the load, we're going to do about 44,500 newtons, which is roughly equivalent to 10,000 pounds. And we'll say OK. And at that point, uh, I can run the simulation. I will point out in the quarter model here, uh, we can see that we have about 10,000 nodes, almost 11,000. So again, had we modeled this in a, in a full model, uh, we'd have about uh, four times that many nodes. So still, you know, certainly a doable number of elements, uh, nodes within, within reason, uh, but it's just nice to have a smaller number. It's faster. Let's go ahead and run our analysis. Faster means we can iterate more. As we think of things that we might need to change or alter or something different that we want to do in our analysis, we can check it really quickly. And see how fast that runs. So there we go. There we have our first set of results. And it showed me a stress of 217 megapascals. Or if we look in PSI, uh, we can see that our stress is right around 31,000. So it's getting pretty close to uh, if this material were an A36 material, the yield on that material was, of course, 36,000. Uh, and we can see where that occurs. If I zoom in, uh, we can see that it's right at a corner here. Uh, and we do see relatively high stresses within the, the pinhole there that I, I didn't remove. So maybe it was a good idea that we didn't remove that. We're capturing that relatively high stress. And we can even see some stress right here on one of the other small holes that I, I didn't remove. So I think it was a good decision not to remove those, but we certainly simplified the entire problem down as much as I could. Now, there will be another course on uh, making sure that your mesh is appropriate. Um, but anytime that we run a mesh, we might want to go back and, and just do something finer, just to double check. So quickly, I'll go into mesh settings and let's go from a element size of nine and a half millimeters. Let's go down to an element size of five millimeters, just a little finer. We'll generate the mesh. That's going to change the number of nodes that I have. Of course, that jumps up the number of nodes from 11,000 to uh, about 44,000, right? So again, had I done the full model, now we'd be uh, somewhere around 160,000 elements. So the, the quarter model is certainly paying off for us. Let's go ahead and hit run. The analysis again will be pretty quick. Okay, analysis is complete. And now we can see that we refined the mesh. Uh, we've even managed to change the location of the max stress in our model. So we can see that we're at 200 and almost 215 megapascals in terms of PSI. In terms of PSI, we're at 31,000. And where does that occur? It occurs right at the one small hole that we left in the model. And if we rotate around, we can see that we're capturing everything pretty well. The mesh is a little finer. We're still seeing some high stress uh, in the other small hole that we left in the model. So again, I think some confirmation that we made some, some good choices about what to remove and, and what to uh, keep in our model. So just in, in closing, some of the simplifications that we did make on the model. We went from a very large assembly down to a smaller assembly. We decided in that two-piece smaller assembly that we could replace one of the components, the high strength steel bar with just some constraints because it would be threaded in right here. 
And then from there, we went into some symmetry. So we applied appropriate symmetry constraints on each of the surfaces that we cut through. And then one of the last techniques we utilized was a line to split our geometry so that we could add load in an appropriate portion of the model. So hopefully that helps to illustrate all those concepts. And thanks for watching.